going to show you a quick guide on how I did this, where I installed some brass strips here in the, this is called the frog, which normally on these LGB R3 switches is plastic. So there's a dead spot here when the train passes over where there's no connectivity. Um, usually it's okay because of the wheel span it. Anyway, I won't get into the details. I was having trouble where some of my engines were stalling. So by putting little brass strips in here, my hope is I can increase conductivity and uh, just make them work better. So this is a used R3 switch I have. Um, it's dirty, but it really doesn't matter for what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is these are little sanding sticks. Take it. I'm just going to run it through here a few times just to clean off the dirt and smooth out that area, rough it up a little bit. Same thing for here, just to clean this off. And while we're doing that, you'll see why I'm doing this in a few in a minute, but you also want to make sure the brass here on the inside is nice and clean because what we're going to do later, we're going to solder to it. And if it's not clean, it's not going to be easy to grab to. So there's that one. We want to do it to this guy right here as well. So, just get in there and clean it so it's not dirty. Probably good enough. Yeah, kind of see that. All right. So what I went, I went ahead and picked up some brass strips. This is the package. I've already taken it out and used it. So that's the number 8230 brass strip from K&S Precision Metals. It's, I got the thinnest one, which is 0.016 by one quarter inch strip, which is this. So obviously it was the full length. I've cut these so that um, this is all I have left. So this is what it would normally look like, but really long. So what I did was I laid it here and I cut it so that it basically went from the edge here to right here at this uh, you know, junction point. These are actually a little on the short side, just a little bit. I'd actually prefer them to be about another quarter inch longer, and you'll see why. Because what we'll do is I'm going to grab my, or um, what we'll do is we're going to cut this now down the middle. So I'm going to grab scissors, and I'm going to start with a little indentation. That's about right, right in the middle. And then just continue up. And I found I needed to use the base of my scissors. I couldn't just cut it like a piece of paper. I had to stick to the base. The, you know, the front of the scissors didn't really work. All right, there we go. And then what it does is it gives us these two little pieces which are now curled from the tension on the metal. So I unbend them a little bit. Just try to flatten them out. It doesn't have to be perfect, and you'll see why. So, flatten that out. And so, you see that these are going to go right in there. So, grab my tweezers. What I do is take my pliers, and then I bend one edge just a little bit, like this. And then what that does is it helps hook onto the leading edge here. I'm going to flip this around because I'm right-handed. So for me, it's easier to work with my right hand to do this. So I have my soldering iron that I've heated up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this. I'm pushing it down and this way at the same time. So it's nice and tight up against this lip over here. So push and then pull that down. Got my soldering iron, it's nice and hot. And I'm gonna move this so it's right there. And then I'm gonna press down, and you might not see it in my video very well, but I'm heating it, the brass, and now it's hot enough where I can see it start melting into the frog. The, the plastic frog is starting to melt just a little bit on the outside edge. And so what I'm doing is just heating it up enough so it's basically flush with the top edge. And then I'm moving down the track, or the, the plate, excuse me, the brass plate just a little bit so that it's melting the plastic along the whole distance. And I come back slowly. That one did not stick very well. So let me try that again. Push down. And I'm applying some pressure 
There we go. Now I see it melting. So I have to hold it for a few seconds until I see the, the plastic start to curl at the very edge of the brass plate. Just a little bit. Takes a few moments for the heat connectivity to go through the brass. Okay, and then hold that. And you'll notice I let go and that didn't move. So, you know, I mean, that's, you know, it's not moving. It's pretty good in there. And then I have these dummy trucks here that I roll across. So you notice, I mean, it's not super smooth and quiet like this. This is smoother, I admit. But you don't have that clack clack that you got when you used to have the screw head here. However, you'll notice right here, right now it's conductive. This little lip is bending down and touching the rail. We're probably going to be good. But just for the hell of it, I'm going to put some solder down there for two reasons. It'll hold this portion of the plate tighter to the uh, track while um, keeping it from moving as much. And the solder will help give it a better connection. So this is why we cleaned this area up, was to make sure that it was clean so that when we put solder down, it will um, adhere better. That said, this is not a super powerful soldering gun, and I'm not the best soldering guy in the world. So, like right there, I just got some in a bad spot, but we'll clean that up in a minute. So, I'm heating this up and squishing the solder into place because, again, my gun is not super powerful, so it's trying to liquefy the solder, but the rail is so cold that it's turning the solder back to solid pretty dang fast. So let's do a little bit more here, squish, and then good enough. That's ugly though, right? Some people, I'm sure there's some soldering guys out there who are absolutely throwing fits right now at my bad job. So what I do is I take my Dremel with this little really worn down sanding head, but it works great, is turn it on and just do this. Nice and smooth, and then I'm going to do it from this end as well. And there we go. Got a little bit of that there. So now you can see that this plate is embedded. It's not really moving. It's, it's in there pretty dang good. You have a solder joint connecting it directly to the rail. So you now have power. And if you run this over it, you'll see that for about an inch, it doesn't have power. But then it hits this and the flange, the bottom of the flange will make contact with that. And it should provide it with enough power to keep going. And then when it turns, you can see you don't want to put anything over here. It's not worth my effort to put a strip here. I'm just doing a strip here and a strip here so that it has enough power until it reaches the metal over here again to continue. So that's how you do this one. Doing this side is exactly the same, so I'm going to spare you that. But uh, yeah, that's the gist of it. Hopefully this was helpful. One last thing I forgot to go over was testing the track continuity to make sure that these plates are actually soldered correctly and going to carry the current. So what I'm going to do is connect a battery to these and test it. So plugging in my 11 point whatever volt LiPo, have my multimeter here. So we'll test up here. First test this, so click and click, shows 11.4 volts. So I'm going to hold this here and then touch the plates, 11.4, all the way through. So that's good. Test here and here, 11.4, so here and here, 11.4, all the way through. So that's how you can tell that, let me unplug this, that's how you can tell that your plates are connected securely, at least 
continuity is happening from the brass rails to your plates. If you don't have that, then these plates don't do you any good. So make sure to check that.